this information is subject to change because we get new updates every day. There is also no order and I will not add timestamps. Enjoy! There is a quick time event in the beginning of the game. You can choose not to press the quick time buttons and the wanderer will still do the same actions as when you did press the prompts. Your character or the wanderer is called an executor, an especially augmented human being that has enhanced abilities. But compared to other augmented things in the game, members of the executor order are the only ones who can initiate time slow mechanics. This is called Fantasia. Whenever you use your time slow ability, you can see it go into cooldown here, but you probably already know that mechanic. Zeke, which is the first character you meet after waking up, has the name Hota Studios on the back of his jacket. Hota Studios is a developer for Tower of Fantasy, but I find it weird that a character in the game has the name of its own developer written on their person. Just a thought. Aberrants used to be normal human beings, until the Tower of Fantasy exploded and released the events of Chernobyl, but it's just a game. Radiation also started to spread from it because of the excessive amounts of Omnium, which is a valuable resource that the people of Adia use. This all occurred in the year 2064, which from my understanding is 50 years ago. Some people call the Tower of Fantasy collapsing the Cataclysm, and the explosion of the Tower of Fantasy managed to destroy an entire fleet that was in its vicinity. The huge ship in Astera Shelter is the ship called Bethlehem, which is funny because it was the only ship that was able to land and survive the crash. Talk about promised land, am I right? In the cinematic scene for the heirs of Ada, the two children at the end are Zeke and Shirley, for anyone who missed that detail. In Tower of Fantasy, you are forced to stay within a certain area or face the wrath of Tower of Fantasy's boundary system called Radiation, which is the result of both the Tower of Fantasy collapsing and a group called the Heirs of Ida messing with the towers all over the continent, hence why you're doing missions and turning off the towers. The boundary system called Radiation in the game is actually backed up by lore, which is excess energy from a resource known as Omnium. Omnium came from a rock called Mara, and exposure to too much copium, I mean Omnium, can turn you into a mindless zombie called Aberrants. Mia, along with the puppets, are called Smart Servants. We still know little about them, but some of them are created as assistants to humans. In some cases, multiple Smart Servants can assist a person in guarding an entire floating island. Simulacrum is in essence a holographic projection that has been developed for a long time. Simulacrums can be designed to hide ruins in plain sight by disguising them as boulders, simulating certain events that happened in a designated location, as well as recall memories of certain individuals, and even mimic theoretically anything and make it into a 3D object. These little balls of curiosity are called cores, and the element they have are what they are categorized as. Apparently, their outer shells are so refined that you can use them as prisms for projecting light, and can even be used as a prism for deconstructing a simulacrum system. You can search for certain objects such as cardboard boxes and trash bins. I haven't found any items inside them yet so far, so tell me in the comments if you find any. Banji's dock feels like Liwe in Genshin. Any Genshin player felt that when they first entered Banji's dock after waveboarding, and especially after lighting up the lanterns and turning on the fireworks. The name Hota can be found on a Ravager ship's tail when they started attacking Astera. Maybe Hota Studios is a mechanic shop in Tower of Fantasy. If so, it's possible that Hota Company is selling unbiased machinery to any person with cash to spend. That or this was a junk ship put together using scraps of different ships. Every relic in the game can be used in combat and can also be used to damage enemies. The strange cube can levitate your enemies, the jet board can run over your enemies, and the magnetic storm knocks your enemies away. As well as the head cannon lifting up your enemies and putting them on top of a pedestal basically. The Mimesis system at Hecros is a fancy term for security surveillance, but the name itself is similar to that of a simulacrum system as well. It tracks every person that is registered into its database and basically records everything that they have done inside of the Mimesis system's boundary. It also bears close resemblance to how Hecros uses simulacrum systems because of how the system imitates or mimics what the system sees and recreates it in a 3D virtual space. Hence the name Mimesis, and that's how Hecro's security works. If you think slowing down time is Hecro's most powerful asset, think again. Time manipulation is a closely guarded secret within Hycros. 
Going back in time is apparently something that researchers have been working on since before the fall of the tower, which is way back before humanity lost its technological advancements. Tower of Fantasy collapsed and was destroyed in the year 2664, but research for time travel could have been underway even before that. There's a study called Chrono Chamber Project, which is an experiment that started in the year 2062 which is two years before the fall of the tower. This can only be seen in a brief moment in Zeke's abandoned shack, right before Frigg interrupts you and purges all the data. Hycros has what possibly looks like three branches of government within it. The parliamentary area, which is this side highlighted in red, and the two other areas which could be the judiciary and the executive branch. These two branches could either be highlighted in yellow slash orange or blue, but that's just a guess. There are two portals in Hycros that you can go to, but you can only enter one. The first is a portal back to Asperia, and note that Astera is only a small island inside of the continent of Asperia. The other portal leads to what looks like a desert region with a huge floating pyramid city, resembling what I think is the Pyramid of Giza. There are also broken roads on the outskirts of the city. This is probably the next region or next continent that we can go to in the future. How long in the future? We don't know. The Banji's dock has alternate names of the stores Walmart, Pizza Hut, and KFC, but were all replaced with subtle and less similar names. Every ruin that you enter has a random amount of computers, data terminals, and trinkets hiding in plain sight that tell you what kind of experiments they were doing in that specific ruin. And the final boss leading to it is sometimes what the entries talk about. For example, in ruin B03, they experimented on Apophis, and in ruin B02, they used varying doses of substances and tried it on aberrants. The result of this experiment was a minotaur boss at the end. Each ruin in the game is assigned a letter and a number that corresponds to the type of experiment they were supposed to conduct. And it also marks the region they are stationed in. A for Astera, B for Banjis, C for Crown Mines. No, I'm kidding, they don't have that specific type of order. But I suspect that the higher the letter and number, the more wild and messed up the experiments are. Inside of a simulacrum story quest, you can access the waypoints and still have it in your permanent map. The best example is Meryl's simulacrum story. The Ruin B03 is a research lab where Apophis was first experimented on. But for some reason, the boss you fight in the final room is Bobard. Apophis was created by the heirs of Ida, as mentioned in its description, and by extension, Apophis was first experimented on in the Ruin B03. So, the heirs of Ida might have a reason for stopping Hycros from obtaining Omnium, and they might know a lot more than we think they do. Lab X07 is an experimental lab focused on simulacrum mimicry technology. The goal of Lab X07 was to integrate the simulacrum's physical appearance into a living human person completely. But the main problem was that the person that was possessing the simulacrum would have the side effect of having the simulacrum's personality. Samir's simulacrum story is an example of this side effect. Puma is the result of this experiment, however. Due to unexpected results, both her physical and conscious mentality were stored separately, hence why Huma wasn't able to wake up and why Samir tricked you into believing who she was. But fear not, Huma Sims, she still has a chance at regaining consciousness. The experiments on Lab X07 wasn't a complete failure, however. Prior to Joaquin's knowledge, Samir could change her physical form without messing up her mental state too much. And the main goal of the experiment was achieved. All they need to do now is refine whatever Samir was able to attain and implement it on other test subjects. Underneath Sita's Island is where you'll find the exterior of Professor Claire's lab. And even below that is where you'd find the engine bay. But on this platform, you can find words such as Hota-K1 underscore 1. Maybe Hota-K1 underscore 1 means patch 1.0, or Hota-K1 underscore 1 is only specific to Cetus Island. Or maybe there's a code in TOF's files that mean Hota-K1 underscore 1, and I don't know, tell me in the comments if this means anything. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support your boy, go check out my other socials, all linked down below in the description. And thanks for watching. So, I'll see you on the next video, yeah? Which are these things over here. Like, comment if you enjoyed, subscribe for more of my ramblings, and stay mad theorists. Bye!